Welcome to this lesson on Kirchhoff's rules as it applies to DC circuits. Let's begin by looking at a circuit. Here if you see uh, a circuit has two batteries and if we try to resist reduce this using Ohm's law it would be a challenge because those batteries would get in the way. While most of the circuits are in series we're not really sure which ones are in series or which ones are in parallel and how the batteries play out. So in a scenario like this, it is best to use Kirchhoff's rules. There are two of them. The first is which that at any junction, the current coming into the junction is equal to the current coming out of the junction. And this is because in the wire charge is conserved. If I take a look at the top section of the 24 volt battery, current will flow clockwise. So here I'll have current one moving through the two and four ohm resistors. It will get to a junction and split. Current 2 will move through the 1 ohm and 5 ohm resistor, while current 3 will move across the 3 ohm resistor. Current 2 and current 3 will then meet back up on the other side and join to form current 1 coming back to the 24 volt uh, battery. So the statement for Kirchhoff's rule would look like current 1, which is the one coming into the junction, would equal current 2 plus current 3 coming out of the junction. The second of Kirchhoff's rules is that the total voltage change for any loop is zero. So in order to look at a loop, I'm going to pick a point to start with. And here I've indicated that with the green dot. And if I start at that green dot, any path I take back to get to that green dot is a considered a loop. So I'll begin by looking at the top box or top section of the circuit here as loop one. As I move across this clockwise, I'll begin at that green dot and then move across the 24 volt battery. So the statement is as I complete the loop, the total change will be zero. But moving across that battery will increase the voltage in that region. And then moving across the two ohm resistor, According to Ohm's law, V equals IR, I will have a voltage drop across that resistor as energy is bled out in the form of heat. Therefore, I will take that 2 ohms times current 1, which is flowing across the resistor, and have a voltage drop in that region. Likewise, across the 4 ohm resistor, I will have a voltage drop. And then across the 3 ohm resistor, I need to recall that I had current 3 fall, fall flowing in that branch. So I will lose voltage or have a voltage drop equivalent to the 3 ohms times current 3. If I collect my terms, bring the voltage on one side and the currents on the other, I will have a statement for loop 1 as 24 volts is equivalent to some function of current 1 plus current 3 which are the currents flowing in that loop. If I move to the bottom box, I can make a second loop in this region. Again, when I move across the 12 volt battery, I will increase the voltage. Moving across the 3 ohm resistor, what I need to realize is that the current in that branch, as I had defined it, is going the other direction. So when I move across the loop that way, it's like swimming upstream. I'm going the opposite direction of the current. Current wants to go left, I'm trying to go right. So in order to make that motion, I would have to add energy into the system. So that will be my three ohms times I3 according to Ohm's law. The rest of the circuit will reduce energy as I will have voltage drops across the one ohm resistor equal to one ohm times I2, as I2 is the current in that branch, and then another drop across the five ohm resistor. Collecting terms, simplifying, I get loop 2 has a 12 volt change, which is equal to some function of I2 minus I3. So if I review my three statements of Kirchhoff's rules, I have current 1 equals current 2 plus current 3. For loop 1, I have 24 volts equals 6I1 plus 3I3. And for loop two, I have the 12 volts equals 6I2 minus 3I1. So now I have three equations with three unknowns. I, be I can begin to use systems of equations to solve for the currents. Beginning with loop one, 
and substituting in my rule for junctions, I could distribute, collect my terms, and here is my statement for my first loop in terms of I2 and I3. Loop 2, if you recall, began as a statement of I2 and I3. So now I have two equations, two unknowns. I'll solve for I3 by isolating it, dividing by the 3. So now I have a statement for I3. Combining these two equations, again distributing, and then collecting terms, I can divide and solve for current 2 as 2.5 amps. Knowing this, I plug back into my statement for I3 and find that in current 3 is equal to 1 amp. Applying my rule for current, I find that the current in branch 1 is simply 3.5 amps. And now I know the current in all three branches as 3.5 amps, 2.5 amps, and 1 amp.